Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever time you are watching this. This is Sam Prentice Makes Things Happen. I'm Sam Prentice back once again making it happen. And today we are looking at the colossal FL Sun SR. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Delta Printer, the SR Speedy Racer. Literally brand new, just been released. So I'm super excited to have a look at this for the very first time, review it and uh, see what it's all about. I have got another FL Sun style printer as well, which is the Q5, which I reviewed about a year or so ago. Uh, they're dedicated to making Delta printers and you know I think they're doing a really good job. There is a software update for this as well. So I'm gonna be looking at that and seeing what the differences are uh, with the pausing apparently between layers. Anyway, it's fixed, so that's all good. Uh, and don't forget guys to hit the subscribe button right now to be part of my 3D printing giveaway. That's coming up, literally 400 subscribers and we're doing a mass giveaway. So make sure you hook yourself up with that. Anyway, let's get straight on into it, shall we? Here we go. Super Racer by FL Sun. So what's going on, guys? I'm a few days into using this 3D printer now and wanted to concentrate on a couple of areas in addition to the overall build. But since we're on the build part, let's start right here. The FL Sun Super Racer is the third recent Delta printer offering from the Chinese company FL Sun. In fact, it's the big brother to the Q5, which was one of the first couple of printers I unboxed and reviewed. And the little Q5 is still going strong, and I use that printer for rapid prints and also TPU. The video can be seen on that in the link above and also in the description. I'll pop a little link in there. The QQS Pro is also a current model, which I believe the SR will replace. Interestingly, when I spoke to FL Sun, they told me that their sole purpose was now to concentrate on Delta style printers. And the SR with speed between 100 and 200 millimeters per second is certainly heading in the right direction. The SR build volume is 260 by 330 millimeters, which is pretty great. But when I searched for other Delta printers that FL Sun had previously produced, I found that in 2018, FL Sun Q Cricket did have a slightly larger height advantage and that the SR just really appears to be an upgraded version of the Q Cricket with a modern board and a tech twist. Regardless though, the SR is feature rich with linear rails and all axes. On launch, it comes with what I believe is to be an SKR 1.3 clone along with Trinamic stepper drivers in the form of TMC 2209s. The advantage of these stepper drivers, however, are lost due to the retraction noise, which was kind of similar to the Q5 due to the steppers. I'm yet to get to the bottom of why this is noisy. Perhaps it's something to do with stealth chop being switched off on the steppers, but I will follow that up. The filament kind of bizarrely is fed through the top plates and down through into a filament detector switch along into a BMG clone extruder. This of course is better than other BMG clones that I've seen but it's still a clone. Now the price point of this is £326 or $449. Where they needed to save money was pretty obvious. Moving down, we have a really interesting touchscreen, which is reminiscent of the modern day ColecoVision handset with the curly core. This is a 3.5 inch display, which is pretty cool and the graphics on boot work very nicely. On the hot end, we have a Volcano style, which is really a great choice to be splashing out filament at high speeds. We have carbon fiber rods, which hold the print head in place. It's a weird material Material to use especially that the print head is pretty damn heavy with a trio of three fans weighing in a total of around about 260 grams. Springs hold the rods in place and give the whole thing decent tension. For all the Cura fans out there, there is a print config ready and waiting for you and the base config is actually pretty decent, depending on the materials that you're using of course. Tweaking these will be key and more exotic filaments, mainly on the speed and retraction side, will obviously need adjusting. But for PLA though, it's awesome. So as I say, the SR is certainly no slouch. I'm already thinking of installing Clipper and to see how quickly I can get this thing to go. The extruder motors, while printing, do get rather hot. Again, it could be down to the stepper motor settings. For what it's worth noting, there was some confusion on which motherboard actually came with this printer. Mine happens to be the SKR 1.3 clone, while FL Sun are also suggesting that future printers will be shipped out with the MKS Nano version 3. When installing my Raspberry Pi and Octopi, I did get a number of errors around firmware, thermal settings, critical warnings, firmware unsafe and also a T0 setting. The T0 setting I believe is down to my Octoprint settings and the firmware error is actually down to the build plate heater not being assigned with thermal runaway. This I will hope will be fixed in future releases. When doing the research for this video, I did see an issue on the print recovery settings where the SD card is actually written to, which causes it to pause during printing. The latest software, which is 1.2.1, I'm told this is fixed and I've not seen any pauses during my printing and testing. So the SR is really an interesting printer and certainly an advancement from FL Sun Q5 printer that I own. 
I'm impressed with the super fast setup which consists of a mere 28 bolts and snap on rods. The SR does retain auto bed leveling in the form of magnetic sensors which is the same as previous models and it works really well. So what is the conclusion? I've been printing with this machine now for just over a week and the results have been varied. has been good overall the printing though has had some mixed results I've had some really really good prints come out of this and these are some of the first ones that I printed and again even at printing at the maximum of 150 millimeters per second and it's not printing at that all of the time but the ones that I have had out of it have been pretty damn good and the printer has been very very quick so we moved on to different types of filament. This is a PETG that came out really, really nicely. And again, this, we started to see a little bit of stringing and things with that, but overall pretty damn good. Uh, let me show you something else that's a bit more intricate. This is a uh, T-Rex head. And as you can see on the teeth there, uh, and some of the smaller parts running at those kinds of speeds, it does start to struggle. And you would have seen in the video as well, while I was printing this, we did have a kind of a load of over extrusion and stuff, which is basically where, where I'm recording on the Octoprint as the print head moves to take the photo. It's just giving a little bit of stringing. So a bit of retraction settings, probably some dedication to dialing things in would be, uh, would be a must with that. But then I started having this really weird issue where I totally lose communication with the motherboard. And I've gone back to FL Sun on this and they're looking into that at the moment. It's not something that they've apparently seen before, but certainly I can only go off, you know, a review is only a review given the information that I've got and the product that I've got. And I obviously I have to be open and honest about that. But I did have a series of five prints that just went wrong. And this is one of them. So as you can see here in the middle here, you can see where uh, obviously it was taking the photo. Um, but then it just stopped, just totally stopped dead. And um, there was nothing I could do about it. There was no salvaging this print at that particular point. And what I had to do in, in regards to getting that working again is actually to reboot the machine and sync the motherboard back up again. So um, it's working and it's leveling and the build quality is good. The build of the printer, you can do it in like 20 minutes. It's super, super easy. But I think there are still some kinks, certainly in the software and maybe even some of the hardware as well. This SKR 1.3 clone thing does um, worry me slightly. And especially as they brought out another motherboard, the uh, Nano board, um, it does 
worry me that the fact that maybe they've kind of looked at that and gone actually we're going this direction because of maybe some problems that they've had in the background but that's not confirmed information and of course i'm only being able to review stuff that i've got that's in front of me so um the next video that i'm going to be making about this particular machine will be about things like pid tuning e-step calibration and retraction heat and that kind of overall setup and the reason i'm going to do that video is because if you have to do that on a hobbyist budget machine and you're a new user, it's going to be a minefield for you and it's not going to be a great experience for your first 3D printer, certainly if you go for this particular printer. So I'm going to try and make a video that is maybe kind of uh, reactive to kind of some of those issues that maybe you might have and certainly the issues that I've got here, how to upgrade uh, the firmware. It's a super, super easy process, basically copying the firmware.bin file onto an SD card and inserting that, how to do all that kind of stuff and how to upgrade. They have fixed that pausing issue and then certainly using this machine, I've had no issues where it's been pausing. It's been stopping incorrectly, but not kind of pausing and blobbing and things like that. So the next video is gonna be very much focused on that. So my final thoughts on this printer are, I do really like the brand. I do really like the printer. I think it's gonna need a little bit of finessing. On the hardware side, as I've experienced, I would probably steer towards the Nano 3 board rather than this SKR clone. Reason being, these issues I personally believe are going to be down to that particular board. And if I get the opportunity to swap that out for a different board, then of course I will. Or I might even stick a non-clone SKR board in there to see what the results would be with that. Uh, FL Sun are working with me at the moment to try and fix these issues, of course. But if you're a new user and you don't know how to deal with some of these firmware issues and you don't know how to dial things in, it could be a bit of a problem for you. I love the brand, I really like the printer, I love the linear rails, I love the concept and what they've done to kind of change this up. And I think this certainly has a great caliber for perhaps being one of the greater Delta printers that's out in the marketplace right now. So should you buy it? Yeah, I think you should but I wouldn't use it as my main printer. This is something that's gonna be for rapid prototyping. So uh, some of the stuff like the big blocks that I'm building, which is actually a massive 3D print that I'm working on right now, that works really well for that because at that speed, I can print it really, really quickly, of course, but the quality doesn't really matter all that much. Although on those particular big parts that I've been printing, the quality is really, really good. So at the end of the day, it's going to be some of these things you're just going to have to deal with some of the quirkiness for this particular printer. It's not an Ender 3. It's not a CR10. It's a very, very different, com more complicated printer overall as well. I think there's going to be some scope for maybe installing Clipper onto this and how that works with the communication between that SKR board and the Raspberry Pi might be up for debate. But Overall, we will get this working, so make sure you check out my up and coming video on how to dial all this stuff in. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like button. If you've got any of these kind of problems yourself, hit me up down below in the comments section, and uh, we hope you're having a good time, and happy printing. We will see you next time. Bye for now.